Yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? This is Total Weed with Online Security, and we are back with another TJ Null OSCP like box. Okay, this one is called Tartar Sauce, and it comes from Hack the Box. All right, y'all, if we if you have been enjoying these series of boxes, please do me a favor and smash that like button. Just go ahead and hit that like button, drop a comment. Maybe there's a particular box you want us to do. Maybe you want to join us on Cyber Thursday. Just leave a comment below, let us know how we're doing. We really, really appreciate that. And don't forget to subscribe. All right, let's jump right into it. I still have a lot of the files that I use to pop this box. Um, this was a pretty straightforward box up until we get to escalating our privileges. I think and this is just my personal opinion. If you're not too savvy on the scripting side or, or just if you don't have a basic understanding of scripting languages, especially bash scripting in this case, this box may have been a little bit more difficult. All right, but that's all the way up until privilege escalation. So I'll stop when we get there to explain a few things. All right, so first things first, going to do a nmap scan. Okay, we can, um, it would probably help if I had the box online, but we already, I'm turning the box on now, but I already did my nmap scan and I'll show you that in a second. All right, so that's starting up. I have my MF scans over here. And you can see that there's really only one port that's open here. And that is port 80. All right, port 80 is the only port that we have open here. Um, if you're not familiar with MF, this is a simple MF. You can just do a simple nmap scan to run this, maybe something like nmap. Uh, um, I think this will work, but we can keep it. Do a service scan, All right? Simple service scan will show you the same thing. I think the box is open now. Is it online now? Should be, but it might take a few minutes for our, our scans to hit it. Um, there you go. So. You can see port 80 is open. Once we see that, next thing most people are gonna do is just check out what's browsing on port 80. So let's go ahead and do that. I think I have it in my host file as well. Yeah, I do have it as tartar sauce.htb in here. But for now, we can just go to 10, 10, 10, 88. It's just the picture of tartar sauce, right? Name of the box is tartar sauce. You can view the source code behind here. There wasn't anything interesting that I could see. So I left this alone. All right, so after this, so why did we come over to the web browser? Well, we saw that port 80 was open. Port 80 being open lets us know that there's some type of web service running on this box, right? Apache is running on this box. Let's see if they're hosting anything on the web page. They're only hosting this tartar sauce picture. So where do we go next from here? Well, we are dealing with the web server, so maybe there are other directories on this server. So what we can do is um, do a GoBuster scan. All right, this is the GoBuster scan that I had ran. We can just, I'll put it to the screen right now. So we're doing GoBuster against this. Actually, you shouldn't see this yet. <laughs> We're going to do a Durbuster, a Go Buster scan against 10, 10, 10, 88. We're going to use this word list and I'm um, going to run that. I think dash K skips the certificate checks and you can see we get this slash web services, right? We get this. I'm going to cancel this scan. We get a directory called slash web services, which is let's go to it first. See what's over there. That's forbidden. GoBuster tells us this is there, but we don't have access to view what's behind this directory. So what's the next step? What can we do now? Well, we are still dealing with the web server and we found another directory on this web server. So let's do a GoBuster scan against this. Maybe there are other things under that. And there actually is. There is a WP directory. I'm going to cancel this GoBuster scan. 
So under web services, GoBuster found another directory called WP for WordPress. So we did GoBuster directory scan against this target, specifically this directory, word list, okay? And it found another one called WP, which is for WordPress. And boom, we get come to a WordPress site. All right, I think it looks a little bit different if I do this. Oh no, same thing. Okay, so we get to a WordPress site. There's nothing really here, right? You can browse around this as, as much as you want to, but I couldn't find anything here. So um, let me know, leave a comment below if, if you found something particular here, if you found something in the source code of the original 10101088 web page. All right, so what do we do from here? Um, well, we're dealing with the web server and this web server does have WordPress on it. All right, so the next thing we're gonna wanna do is do a WordPress scan, all right? That's one of the things that we can do immediately, right? If you did something different, please leave that in the comment section below. I, let, I would like to learn um, your thought process behind things. The next thing I did was a WordPress scan because, hey, I found WordPress on this box, all right? So, to do this WordPress scan, we're gonna use a tool called WPS Scan. Cool, one thing I love about this, uh, my Cali box, right? It saves all my syntax, so I don't gotta redo it. So we're gonna do a WPS Scan, which is just a WordPress scanner. We're gonna do it against this target, right? We have to point it to WordPress, right? To that directory. Um, we're going to uh, do a, um, check all vulnerable plugins, and we're gonna do an aggressive check. All right, so this is gonna take a while. Um, did I save it? So it's gonna take a while, right? While that's running, we'll come back to it and I'll show it to you. But I wanna try to keep this video as short as possible. So while that's running, it is gonna find a vulnerable plugin. The plugin is called Wool. And Searchboard actually has a remote file inclusion vulnerability um, exploit, I should say, for that plugin, right? This is a guest book that is, um, it's a word, Gold is a WordPress plugin guest book. And um, there's a remote file inclusion vulnerability that we can check out. All we gotta do is use this. Uh, what was it again? I think I already have it though, so dash M we we'll go ahead and download that file, but I think I already have it here. And it is, it's right here. So you can take a look at it on your own time, feel free to read it. But this is the RFI vulnerability hit here. <coughs> I'm actually gonna, there we go. This is the RFI vulnerability here. You're just going to um, put our host right here. Okay, the host that we're targeting, that 10101088 10, slash web services slash WP. We're gonna put all of that here. Then we're gonna put our IP address that's pointing back to our web server here. Right, it's gonna point to a file on our web server. Right, and that file has to be named WP, WP dash load. like nano better when I'm showing people stuff. So this, where it goes. So that plugin is vulnerable to this remote file inclusion vulnerability here. And all we have to do is point our IP, um, point the remote server to us, right? That's gonna be us over here. So let's, let's just go ahead and do it real quick. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Let me see if this finished running. No, it's still running. We'll let that run because I want you to see it. So here is the wp-load.php file. This is what the remote file inclusion, um, the RFI exploit is using, right? All this is is a PHP script, right? The vulnerability 
that R5 vulnerability is abusing the fact that this wp-low.php file is not being validated. It's not being sanitized. Okay, the contents inside of it are not being sanitized for, I mean, they're not being validated. Okay, so we can go ahead and literally put a PHP reverse shell behind this file. So that's what we did here, all right? So all I did was copy, um, Yeah, there it is. All I did was copy this this guy. Here. Copied it to my present directory. That's what that dot is for. And I just renamed it. I renamed this to this. So I'll remove this WP dash low. All right, so we have our reverse shell. We copied it over. Before we rename it, let's go ahead and make some changes in here. So I'm just gonna make some changes to um. Whoops, I went too far down. I need to change the IP address. That should be at the top. I need to change the IP and port number. There we go. First of all, what is my IP? 10, 10, 14, 3. And I like to just use port 1, 2, 3, 4. You probably should use like port 80 or 443, but my choice. So now I'm going to go ahead and rename this to wp-load.php because that's what the RFI vulnerability is exploiting. It's exploiting the fact that we can change the contents of this file. So I'm going to rename this to wp-low.php. Cool, it's there. And this is still running. All right, cool, it stopped running because I want to close the screen out. So you can see that we have this goal-gb um, plugin here. All right, that's where we found it. Uh, uh, that's why we started the search board against it because WP scanner told us it was here. So I'm gonna go here, close this out, boom, boom. All right, cool. So we have our wp-load.php file. Now all we need to do is one, start up a Python listener, right? Uh, or web server. So you can do Python 3-m http.server 80. That'll start up a, a, a Python web server for you. And then, all right, so we have our Python web server running. I'm gonna do it up here. We line wrap netcat so I'm going to start up my netcat listener on port 1234 up here to take that Python listener is going to be waiting for us to reach back I mean to execute that RFI vulnerability and the only thing I need now is that you are that entire this right here so this is going to be 10 10 14 3 wp-low.php right I think so I don't think I need to give it that though I think it's just gonna find it okay and then this beginning part needs to be 10 10 10 88 
web services, WordPress, yeah. All right, so this is what we're going to execute. I'm gonna copy that. We have our target host right here. And then we have us down here where it's gonna reach back out to. So let's go ahead and do that. I think on my write up, I, I use port 8000, right? Cause I just use PyWeb to start up my service on 8000. All right, so let's go ahead and execute that here in our a browser and it worked okay you can see on the bottom right panel that it did reach out to get the wp-load.php file and you can see at the top panel we have a shell who am i we are www-data i'm gonna go ahead and update this shell all right now Next up, we want to escalate our privileges. We got the initial exploitation. Now let's escalate our privileges if we can. Um, one of the first things that I typically do on a Linux box is, or on any box, is check my permissions. Right with sudo l, you can see that there's a user named Anuma who can run Bintar as um, um, as sudo. Right, they can run this as sudo, and you don't need a password to run it. Right, Bintar can actually be exploited if you go to GTFO bins. Right, GTFO bins, a bunch of different um, privilege escalation exploits on this site. One of them can help us break out of this tar, out of the shell into Anuma. All right, so we can break from www-data into a NUMA because of this Bintar exploit. So it can be used to break out of restricted environments by spawning an interactive system shell. So what we're gonna do is run this, just literally copy and paste it. We have to do sudo dash u enuma because we're gonna run this as enuma. And then we're gonna paste that. Came out a little weird. Let me fix it before I run it. All right, and then we're gonna paste that and just run it. Now let's see who we are now. We are Anuma. All right, we were able to escape out of the www-data shell into Anuma. And why? Because Anuma was able to run Bintar as sudo. And there is an exploit to break out of that shell. So what we're gonna do is one more time. Can I just hit up? Yeah. All right, cool. Now, I'm gonna skip a lot of this, the, uh, of what I did initially. Um, let's see, do I have it here? No, I don't. So, what, we, what we're gonna do next, because the goal is still to escalate our privileges, what we're gonna do next, um, or what I did next was use Lin Unum and um, um, Lin Peas to find other vulnerabilities that I could poke on this box, right? I copied it over to my victim box up here as a NUMA, okay? Uh, but I'm gonna skip that part right now just for the sake of time. Now, something that it did uh, identify for us was the fact that um, there is a script that's running every five minutes, right? There's a script that's running every five minutes. It's called backup error, okay? Right, and this is where the script is. All right, this script is running every five minutes. Okay, let me see. System, this time is this it? Yeah. So you have a script that's running every five minutes. It's about to run in two minutes. This is it. Um, you'll see why this is it. It's gonna keep running every five minutes. Everything else has like a bunch of time left to run. But uh, so that script, let's go look at it real quick. Uh, all right, so there's some variables up top. 
All right, so this script, what it's doing, all right, setting a bunch of different variables up here, all right? Your base there, setting it to var www.html. There's this temp directory where everything's gonna be stored in, which is under var temp. And um, this temp file and then this check directory, all right? Temp file is just a random use, it's a random name. It's gonna be under temp dir. Here's the random name that they're generating each time, right? Um, and then this check directory here, that's also gonna be under temp dir. So, so these are variables that are just getting set up top. I'm really just going through the most important parts of the ones that we're gonna use to exploit. So, right, they're cleaning up the directory here. Now, right here is when Enuma is using her, or him or her, they're using their pseudo powers to run Bintar and um, tar up everything inside of base dir, which is var everything inside of here. They're trying to tar that up into this random file. Okay, so they're creating the R path, the tar file. Now that they do that, this script is gonna wait for 30 seconds. And don't worry about this, because this actually doesn't get run next. The script is gonna wait for 30 seconds and then it's going to make a directory called check, All right? That check directory, I'm gonna go back up, is right here. All right, it's gonna make a directory under var temp because that's temp there right here and then check. Okay, that's after 30 seconds. It's gonna make that directory check and then it's going to tar or it's gonna extract everything out of that temp file the, the file with the random names into the directory check. So everything that was tarred up as a NUMA, you remember NUMA up here, tarred up everything under base dir as sudo, right? They did it as sudo. They tarred up everything under base dir into this random file. Now the script is gonna take that random file and extract it into the check directory. Okay, it's gonna extract it into the check directory. So that's what we're going to abuse. Before it extracts this stuff into the check directory, we are going to replace the contents inside of this with the contents inside of, um, with what we're gonna replace it with whatever we wanna replace it with, All right? We are going to replace it with whatever we want to replace it with. Okay, so that when it extracts it, it will extract it into this check directory. Um, here, let's go look at it real quick. Uh, let me see something. All right, so you see this script is being run as root. Okay, so when root extracts everything into that check directory, we want to, um, replace what it's extracting with with our payload, right? With our script, our reverse shell, whatever we want to replace it with so that it extracts it as root as well. And then when we execute it, we can just run it as root. So let's go to the directory, CD var temp. That's where everything's going down. Right now you don't see that file. Let's see how much time. It's three minutes left. So before we see the file, let's go ahead and do what we need to do, right? Because we want to swap out that random file with, or we want to replace the contents of that random file with something of our own. So what we want to do, I have this set UID file here. Okay, this is, you could, All right, we have this set UID file that's just gonna execute a shell as root for us. All right, it's gonna execute a shell as root. You can pause the screen here and copy this if you want to. I got this from um, IPsec or IPsec. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is compile, well, I already did it. We're gonna compile this. Uh, where is it? Uh, which one did I put? Oh, I think I already tarred it up. 
Yeah, I think I already tarred it up. Um, it's okay. We'll just do it again. All right, so, because it's in one of these tar files, but we'll just do it again. So, I'm going to take that set UID. It's because it's a C file right now. We got to tar it up. I mean, compile it so it can actually execute. So, we're going to compile it with GCC. Uh, let's see if I remember this. Uh, what do we want to call it? Let's call it um, Tartar. Yeah. So we're going to compile it into a file called Tartar. So we see Tartars here. That's it right here. Now, the thing about this is for, for this to work, we want it to, we have to set the set the um the suid bit right we have to set that suid bit so we're going to do that with 655 and uh tartar whoops so now you can see that we have the 655 permission set here yeah we want this set because when um whoever we we want this executable right here to run with the same permissions as the owner all right so let's change the owner to root all right so we want so now that we gotta set it again <laughs> schmod So we want now that the the that SUID is set here, okay, or the set UID is that set UID bit is set here. We it is going to run this when this is ran when this is executed. It is going to run with the same permissions as the owner now. All right, so it's going to run with the same permissions as root. All right, but in order for this to work, remember. So now we're gonna transfer this over here, but before we transfer it, we're gonna tar it up. All right, we're gonna tar it up in the same directory structure that this script is looking for. Remember that it right here, where is it, where is it, where is it? We are tarring up base dirt into this temp file. Okay, we're tarring up base there into that temp file. And then it's gonna set wait for 30 seconds. Then it's gonna make this directory check. And then it's gonna extract everything into that temp file over here. All right, it's gonna extract everything in that temp file over there. This is so whatever's in this temp file, we're gonna replace it with our content, but we wanna keep the same structure as where is it? this var www html why because this is the directory structure that is being put into temp file right why because base dir var www html is being extracted or is being tarred up into temp file all right so let's just go ahead and get to it. So we have it here. We're gonna make that directory first. All right, remember we're making this directory because that is what's getting tarred up into um, that random file. So we're gonna make this. I'm going to change the permissions of this to root. All right, that's gonna change everything inside of all these directories. It's gonna change the permissions to root. Then I'm going to move Tartar. Let me make sure its permissions haven't changed. All right, cool, then I'm gonna move Tartar over to var.html, permission denied, because it's owned by root, boom. Cool. Oh, I gotta remove my other one. 
I forgot. That's what I used earlier. All right, cool. Before I tar this up, what I'm gonna do is shimad it again. actually found but it's already at I got just want to make sure this doesn't change but it, it, we should be good here all right we should be good all right so now let's go ahead and tar this up we're gonna tar Z V I mean Z C V F and uh, we're gonna tar it up into let's call it um, Clown that tar. How about that? Clown that tar. We're gonna tar a bar. Boom. Clown that tar. Just gonna change the permissions. Now we can go ahead and send this over. Use a netcat. Netcat 10, 10, 14, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. And we'll get clown that tar. Now this file is here. We got four minutes left, so I'm going to cut this part of the video. So you all don't have to wait this entire four minutes. All right, something I wanna do before the timer is over is pseudo shamad 655clown.tar um, just in case, so when they execute the tar command, they execute it with the same permissions as root. I don't know if that's a thing, but I just wanna do that just in case. And then I'm gonna retransfer this. back over here. So I'm gonna remove this clown that tar. Netcat, let's see if it's already here. Uh, I could have already typed it by now. Boom. We got it. Now, Seven seconds left. Cool. So we have seven seconds left before we should see that random file name. And there it is. Remember to do ls a or else you won't see the file. Files and directories with dots before them, you will not see them with the regular ls. Okay. So now that the file is here, we have to copy our content from clown.tar into this directory. All right, so we copied everything from clown.tar in here. So that means we copied our, um, what's it called again? We copied our tartar exploit. So we should see the check directory. Cool, we see the check directory. The check directory is created. So let's go into well, let's just, it should be check var www.html. And then our tartar should be in there. And you can see that it is running as, I mean, it was executed as root. So let's cd into check, cd into var, cd into www, cd into html, and run tartar. Boom, we executed tartar. Right, and who are we? We are root. All right, it was easy as that. I don't think that's gonna work with that space like that. Yeah. So this box wasn't that difficult, y'all. Like I said before, I think the most difficult part was 
understanding what was going on behind this this script here, this backup error script. Right, you can see this right here. And um, we could have looked at Enumas earlier. So here's the user.txt here. Right, not a difficult box, y'all. The most difficult thing about this box, I think, would be just understanding what's going on behind that script. It might have been a learning curve for a few of you, but I'm pretty sure most of you did not let that stop you. You tried to figure it out. Maybe looked at other write-ups, other walkthroughs. Y'all, if you have enjoyed this walkthrough video, please do me a favor and smash the like button. Please don't forget to subscribe. Leave a comment. What was your favorite part of the video? What tools would you like me to use more? Maybe there's some explanation that you want me to provide. Leave that in the comment sections below. We read every single last comment and we try our best to respond to everything. All right, I don't think there's a comment we haven't responded to yet, right? Knock on wood, don't wanna jinx it yet. All right, y'all, y'all please stay safe, stay dangerous, hold on to your loved ones, give them a fat kiss, make sure that they know that you love them and I will see you all next time. Peace.